guys, we are back for another Dokkan Battle video. Uh, today we are going to go ahead and take down um, the Wicked Bloodline Ultimate Red Zone with the Ginyu Force team. You guys know the way we do this. Um, we're going to do a full sweep of all these Wicked Bloodline uh, Red Zone stages with no items. That's one of the most important things. So, honestly, the Ginyu Force team, I did feel like had a lot of trouble in here. Um, this was not the same as it was for me several months ago. The Ginyu Force team is actually when I started doing these red zone challenges because I just wanted to prove to people how strong the Ginyu Force team was. Back on their initial... Everyone loves them, right? Oh, they're so crazy. Back on their initial release, though, people were not as high on these Ginyu Force characters, I feel like, as I was. So I, I was doing this to sure to show that to people. The Wicked Bloodline red zone, though. Besides this fight... This fight is very difficult, the full power Frieza fight. But besides this fight, all of these red zone stages in here are very quick fights, right? Turn 2, turn 3, turn 4, you could be against the final phase in a lot of these fights. And it's just really tough, right? Because all the Ginyu Force units build up. Ginyu himself really can stack up quite a bit and can even transform into Goku Ginyu until turn 4, right? So you do definitely need, um, you know, to, to spend time. And in here, these fights are just so quick, right? Now, we use the core of Ginyu, Rakuman, Goldo, and Birder and Jace in every single fight. Birder and Jace, by the way, I feel like are a little bit of a disrespected unit. Everyone knows how godly Rakum and Goldo are. But Birder and Jace are a ridiculous character as well. Capable of working well in all of these red zone fights. Because they give 60% support to Ginyu with a 50% chance to dodge. And oftentimes they're well over 300k defense. Birder and Jace are ridiculously busted, right? Now, this Frieza fight is the one fight in here that does go on for quite a while. Which will allow us to stack up with all the Ginyu Force characters. Um, and, you know, thus be able to win pretty easily. The other thing, too, is that this Frieza fight does work very well for the coolers, right? We can come in here. We can build up Final Form Cooler build up easy a base cooler and then we can just completely obliterate and that is actually what happens in this fight we have our final form cooler completely destroy full power frieza in one turn is what happens later on in this fight right cooler just completely annihilates full power frieza and then we get our first w in here um i think that this fight only took a couple of tries it might only have been like one two or three um this one really wasn't so bad because it's a longer fight but a lot of the other upcoming stages were much more difficult than this one.
Alright, so now we're moving on to the final form cooler fight. Now, one major issue with Ginyu's team, especially in the Wicked Bloodline Red Zone, is this. You end up with double Ginyu in your opening turn, and you're screwed. Especially if we don't get another Ginyu Force member on here, which we don't. We have three other Ginyu Force members on the team, and we can see that they're on opposite rotations. A lot of times, a lot of these runs, this is a death sentence, right? You've lost at this point right here already. Um, and I mean, if Cooler super golden freeze at the start, sure. But guess where Cooler supers? Not at the start, right? So we eat a super attack from Cooler, who's the hardest hitting turn one red zone boss in the game, by the way. There's not a red zone boss who hits harder than this guy turn one. And of course, the, I mean, at least this again, you got an additional super right here, which will allow us to at least survive, right? If Ginyu didn't super there, we were probably dead. Now, you know, we're pretty much done. Like, when you... A lot of the 200% teams, I feel like, are like this. Goku and Gohan's team, right? A bunch of these teams. AGL Cell's team. You get double of the leader in the opening turn, and you're screwed in these red zones. You, you pretty much can't overcome it unless some bullshit like this happens right here. Because we brought LR Metal Cooler, we were able to rebound from the ridiculously tough fight uh, start of this fight right here. You know, and then remember, Metal Cooler's Revive enables us to have Golden Freeze's passive and stuff like that, right? LR Metal Cooler, th this is, you know, when we were evaluating him at the start, this is a point a lot of us were bringing up that he could have this type of potential to help teams out, right? Where he can, you know, just be used in a very similar to fashion to like AGL PyCon or the Tech Androids, and that's what we got done here, right? So the Ginyu Force team itself does have pretty high comeback potential, though. With, you know, the transformation into Goku Ginyu taking Ginyu's body, um, we typically are able to get that big heal, right? Ginyu's able to stack up. We know how strong Rakum and Goldo are. So, it's like, th with this team, you we really can overcome, but, man, getting that double Ginyu opener, um, it, it just becomes very, very difficult to sort of make it through, right? Um, on a lot of these different fights, we are able to sort of use some other Ginyu Force characters. The problem here... Um, is that we I, we could have brought physical raccoon, but he just quite does not cut it in here. He just takes way. I, I think physical raccoon. He, he a lot of times he's just taking so much damage because this cooler, right? It's just you know that AGL cooler can. He, this guy just does so much damage, which can be a huge problem. So we do have to actually use um, one of the transformations into Goku Ginyu pretty early here. Not too much we can do about that, though, again, because Cooler just hits so damn hard. Now, one thing that is good, remember, you know, Cooler doesn't really have gimmicks just besides how hard he hits, right? He's just a huge hard hitter, right? It's it's sort of like similar to, like, the, I don't know, Janemba fight or something like that in that case, right? That he just kind of hits really hard. Um, but Final Form Cooler is uh, Int, which means LR Metal Cooler is even better in this fight. Right, because, you know, we're able to stick him against uh, Cooler with type advantage. And don't forget that Final Form Cooler, he does that super attack, which is essentially, you know, Omega Shenron level damage on a super attack. But it is a melee, unarmed, or physical super, whatever you want to call it. So LR Metal Cooler will actually be able to nullify um, if we would get caught on that super attack. From here, it's just simply, right, like, don't let Birder and Jace eat a super um, and we should be pretty good. We do still have LR Metal Cooler's active skill available to us. Typically, um, I do like to save Metal Cooler's active skill as much as possible till deep in the fight when I actually need the heal, right? Um, but, you know, we're, we're able to get the job done here. The other thing, too, with Metal Cooler that is very helpful, even on just a, a team like this, um, is the fact that Metal Cooler can give us heals, right? Th those heals every single turn can be very good because... Preferentially, like, pre preferably, I would want to keep Ginyu in base as long as possible, right? Because he's giving the extra support, and then he continues stacking. But, you know, if we got to transform the heal, we have to transform the heal. But we try and, you know, go away from that as long as possible. But here was the Final Form Cooler fight. We had a very, very, very tough beginning. But again, the team is capable of rebounding.
moving on to the Mecha Frieza and King Cold fights. Um, you guys know the deal. This is uh, one of the more unimpressive red zone fights that exists pretty much at all, right? Um, th this, this, like, I ranked all 19 red zone fights, and this is very, very low on my rankings. I don't even think I had this as a top 10 hardest red zone fight, right? Like, there's just so many more difficult fights. Um, whereas all these other Wicked Bloodline stages, right? It's like turn one, these bosses are hitting you for like 700k plus, and then you get to the second phase and they're all like million damage, like super attack bosses. Um, but then, except for this one, right? This first phase, you know, I've, we've talked about it at length. Like, this is a joke. The, only the first Frieza soldier can even super attack. The other two don't even super. So they just go down like fish instantly, right? Like they put up no like resistance towards us whatsoever. These Frieza soldiers were able to completely destroy. And then against Mecha Frieza and King Cold, um, they're pretty unimpressive in terms of their damage, only doing in the 700,000 range, right? I, I think, does, I think AGL Cooler, like that first phase actually hits harder, um, than Mecha Frieza and King Cold. Let me just quickly double check, fact check that. Cooler's damage is 812. Yeah, that's what AGL Cooler does. So yeah, Cooler's damage is higher in turn one than both Mecha Frieza and King Cold's damage, which is just so crazy to think about, right? Um, and then of course, King Cold does seal us every single turn. Um, we really want to try and avoid um, these seals as much as we can. So what you want to do is focus all your firepower on King Cold, right? You get rid of King Cold as fast as possible, um, and then we don't have to worry about being sealed anymore. I mean, look at this turn, right? Both Captain Ginyu and Cooler got sealed. Just a huge pain in the ass. Um, the other thing that happened that was actually kind of weird in this fight, I think this is the first time I've ever used LR Golden Frieza's active skill. Um, and actually been able to take advantage of the fact that it's an AoE effect, right? So LR Golden Frieza, you could use his active skill if your HP is under 50%, I think starting from the fourth turn or third turn, um, you're able to use LR Golden Frieza's active skill, right? Um, which doesn't really hit that hard. It's not really that impressive. doesn't really do a lot of damage. But the one sort of effect this does have is it is an AoE attack, right? So we can actually see... Golden Frieza use the Earthbreaker and take advantage of the AoE, which is pretty cool. But again, it hits like a feather because Golden Frieza doesn't stack attack. He also does not have um, like guaranteed crits or anything like that on his active skill. Golden Frieza, compared to like he's I think one of the best units in the game. Compared to the active skills of all the other sort of like best units in the game, I think Golden Frieza's active skill just pales far in comparison to those other characters. Right? It's very weird. Um, but Golden Frieza, the rest of his kit is just so strong, it's not really a big deal, right? But there is the Mecha Frieza and King Cold fight. Uh, very, very easy.
Alright guys, now we move on to what was, I think, far and away the hardest fight to get done um, here in this Wicked Bloodline Red Zone with Captain Ginyu Seam, with the Ginyu Force. So this Cyclopean robot is a nightmare, dude. This guard is a problem. He does a lot of damage early on. He could also debuff your stats too, which is very, very problematic. Now this fight is so hard for a couple of different reasons we'll go over. Number one, of course, our opening rotations, right? Opening rotations, like, if we can't get a good opening rotation, it can just be very, 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 very difficult here um, at the start, right? Like, it's just not ideal um, with this guard potentially being able to bully us. Now, we did get lucky in that we had Raccoon and Goldo in the opening turn, so that means we're able to lower this guard's attack. That's one of the keys to this fight, is being able to lower the guard's attack, which really puts you in better position. And then, of course, we get this goddamn rotation yet again. This is just horrible. Um, I This Metal Cooler fight took me many tries to get done. Um, otherwise, you know, I might have... If not for the fact I think this was the last attempt um, for the day, uh, I might have even just reset because it's just so annoying getting double Ginyu on this opening turn like this because you just really, like, you want to get to stacking with these Ginyus. It's so frustrating potentially missing super attacks, missing defensive stacks, missing this character getting stronger before we get to red zone metal cooler who is just a nightmare to deal with with this team now one of the big problems here right is because we're rocking double captain ginyu it's like we got to run raccoon and goldo we got to run birder and jace pretty much like that's the core those four characters right are in every single one of these runs um but then that leaves us with only a couple of open slots here and it's like we really want to run tech characters you got to run tech characters because AGL Metal Cooler, he just hits way too freaking hard. So this opens up a couple of options, but it also locks down the STR Coolers as well. Now, when the STR Coolers, you know, they're on their 200% leader skills, and, like, you know, you have the whole team full of Big Bad Bosses, Metamorphosis, Sisters for Conquest, it works really good, and they could dominate. But in this lineup, right, like, the two Coolers would be getting the 200% leader skill from Ginyu's um, leader skill, but... They, you know, we have so many characters here that don't have those links. Thirst for Conquest, Big Bad Bosses, um, and Metamorphosis. So, like, we're using a, a like, kind of a, a neutered version of them. And this Metal Coolers type advantage on them, too. So, um, I, I'm not, I wasn't super comfortable trying full Final Form Cooler or Easy A Base Cooler. Because it, when I tell y'all that this piece of shit Metal Cooler, I can't, dude, he supers every slot. I have so many runs. Of him killing me in every slot. Like, he supers every character, every slot, every turn. It's just, it's a nightmare. So, I really wanted to try and build a team where I have a very good chance of surviving the super attack with every single character. Which is what we have here, right? Also, notice that Golden Frieza in that last turn did dodge a super attack. Golden Frieza, the tech one, and the AGL one, they are used for one purpose. Listen to me. Put full dodge on them. Don't worry that they have damage reduction. Don't start thinking very stupidly, right? Like, a lot of the community does where they go, Oh my god, the unit is already techie. Why are you going to give them more dodge? Because their point is to not take a lot of damage, right? So, Golden Frieza, if he eats a super attack, you know, he could still take 100 damage, 150k damage, 200k damage, right? EGL Golden Frieza could take 200k damage from Cell Max. Shit like that. But, if you give these characters dodge... You, you can just take zero damage as well. And then, you know, if it does connect, you take a little bit of damage, but you'll still be able to survive. Dodge helps so much, especially, too, with these Golden Freezes, both the Tech and EGL one, where your HP falls below the certain threshold, and they lose part of their passive. Uh, we, dude, I had so many runs against this Metal Cooler, which were so difficult, and uh, Golden Freeze was dodging so many attacks for me. Like, it's so... I, I really am trying my best to change the community's perception around dodge. A lot of y'all just don't get it. It is so much better than people give it credit for. These bosses hit so hard. It is so difficult to survive, right? Giving some of these characters dodge, you're giving yourself such a better chance at living, right? Because all these characters usually are doing good damage, but giving yourself that extra defense really can save you. Now, the reason... That this Metal Cooler fight, there's several reasons, I guess, why this one was so tough, right? Of course, him being AGL means that, you know, the coolers are not quite as good, shit like that. But <laughs> this is, like, 
the only run I've had, like, red zone run this year I've had where I've actually been like, damn, I actually really do wish I had more damage was this fight. Because of Metal Cooler healing 7 million per turn, I actually had a, a lot of trouble keeping up with Metal Cooler's healing. I believe, if you guys notice, this Ginyu, like, you know, no item sweep of the red zone, this is the longest one of any of the teams we've used. It's because this fight against this Metal Cooler was 26 minutes because I couldn't keep up with his healing. The, I, I believe we finally win this fight on turn 15. I believe it's turn 15 when we secure our W on this fight over Metal Cooler. It's just it's just so crazy, right? Like that, that 7 million HP he heals per turn is a lot. Right, like if we don't get good luck with Ginyu, you know, double supering or critting or like Birder and Jace getting additionals or something like that, like we're just not really able to make that much ground on Cooler. And then things start to become very scary because I I've already mentioned how routinely I'm getting destroyed by Cooler supering the second slot, Cooler supering the third slot, right? Like it, it, it's, it gets very tough. So we just try and hang in there as long as we can. Uh, a lot of the other options on the team are very, you know, obvious. Uh, tech transforming Frieza, I tried, but I just kept, he just kept dying against the Cyclopean robot instantly, right? Like, tech transforming Frieza, it's like, if we could get him to final form or golden, he'd be great, and he'd be healing us at the start of turn and shit like that, it'd be awesome. But, like, the Cyclopean guard, uh, like, you know, he just, <laughs> like, we would just need good luck to get Frieza through that fight. He's, Frieza's taking 150k. Per normal, after he double supers against the Cyclopean Garden. And it, it, it's just, it's very tough. Very, very tough in there. Um, and then, of course, uh, we're using tech base form cooler as well. I went with him over transforming Frieza. Because base form cooler, remember, he defensive stacks. But he also is giving terrifying conqueror support, right? So he is supporting, the entire team is terrifying conquerors. So he's supporting all of the characters on the team. That tech base form cooler and the longer the fight goes on, which this fight goes on for a super long time, one reason is I do play very safe, very cautiously at many points, right? Like resetting for Captain Ginyu's scouter because I, it's just like, I, dude, I, I lost a lot of times to this fight. And it's like getting past the Cyclopean Guard is not as easy as you'd think. So it's like once I made it to like this deep into the fight where now we're at the point now turn nine plus where these Ginyus can start surviving a super attack from Metal Cooler, right? It does take a while, because remember, Metal Cooler hits about as hard as Red Zone Broly. Uh, Re Metal Cooler is essentially Red Zone Broly, except you can dodge against Cooler. Um, Cooler heals 7 million HP per turn, and then Cooler only supers once per turn, right? Those are sort of the, the, the differences. Um, but this is a, a boss that, you know, AGL Broly... Oftentimes, you're fighting AGL Broly. Um, uh, like, you know, you get to him on, like, turn 8 or something like that, right? Like, Broly and Omega, you get to these bosses on, like, turn 8. But this guy, especially if you're running, like, LR Final Form Cooler, you could be going up against this guy in turn 2, right? That That's one thing that really makes this fight um, quite difficult. Now, again, at this point, uh, with the way Ginyu's stats buffs work and stuff like that, uh, the Goku Ginyu can easily survive a super attack. Um, and I think base Ginyu is essentially at that level as well. Basically, for us winning, we really are relying on the Goku Ginyu quite a bit. Because remember, Goku Ginyu does stack attack with every super attack he does. So if we can just live, eventually we're going to get to the point where Goku Ginyu will be doing too much damage um, for Metal Cooler to be able to out-heal, right? And then, of course, our Dokkan attack right there. Basically, the, the Dokkan attack did about as much damage as Metal Cooler healed this turn. It's just... It's so tough. That Metal Cooler heal gave me such issues. But, all right, that basically explains the gist of everything with this fight. Um, I didn't really want to try Final Form Cooler because, again, he's going to get locked down by this Metal Cooler. And then if Metal Cooler catches him, it's GG. Um, Red Zone Broly and Cell Max will oftentimes super slots 2 and 3, but that's because they double super, right? I, I swear, this... Metal Cooler seems to super slots 2 and 3 more than a lot of other bosses, man. I can never predict where this guy's going to super attack. I actually had a run where I had Metal Cooler down to his pretty much final health bar um, at, with LR Metal Cooler. LR Metal Cooler was supered in slot 3, I believe, three separate times in that run. The first one killed Metal Cooler, and then he revived. 
The second one, I three dodged it. And then the third one killed me. Three super attacks at LR Metal Cooler in slot three, right? Like, it's just ridiculous. Um, and remember, it's, it is very tough to survive this guy's super attack. Good thing we have Goat Ginyu, though. He can definitely handle things, right? Like, once you start getting deep into the fight, like, Goku Ginyu is too much. But, like, you know, early on, like, it's very... This fight is so tough to get your feet, like, you know, above water. It, it's just hard to get established. Because um, this, this cooler fight is just very tough. guys now we're moving on to the final fight here in the wicked bloodline red zone um and this one is a, a far easier to accomplish with this team uh than that last metal cooler fight 
So now we're going up against the Metal Cooler Core. Um, really not too bad, because we're able to bring the coolers, right, who can dominate. Now, unfortunately, we have our usual ass rotation right at the start. It's crazy that these three ridiculously tough fights, Final Form Cooler, Metal Cooler, and the Metal Cooler Core, the three hardest ones in here, it's crazy that all three of them, we got an unbelievably terrible start. Look at this. Um, we do win this. We no item this fight. We come back from this. Now, one of the main reasons for that, of course, is that the two coolers, the two SCR coolers, absolutely hard counter and obliterate this fight to a ridiculous degree. Now, the Metal Cooler army is a ridiculously scary boss that can double super, right? They could debuff. There's a lot of nasty shit they can do. But we could also lower their attack, too. So f the two coolers together get 80 attack debuffs on the Metal Cooler army, and then boom, we're, we're right back in the fight, right? Because then, you know, the attack debuffs last for three turns. So then before you know it, the Metal Cooler army can't even really damage us um, for uh, sort of like this, these initial phases right here. And then going into the second phase, we go up against the physical Metal Cooler core. He's physical. So that enables LR Cooler to become Big Daddy Dick LR Cooler mode, right? Because we're able to very safely run easy a base cooler. Even though, again, these Wicked Bloodline fights are probably not the best for base cooler either. Because, again, they're all just so, like, you're right into the tough part of it, right? Like, you're not really able to sort of stack up as much as you would like for some of these fights um but right the fact that we have that physical cooler at the end and we could just you know completely annihilate um oh it, it I, that was this is a smart decision to sort of gamble right here just put just leave the cooler rotation together and just sort of gamble i, I actually in hindsight i think this was a really good play rather than leave golden frieza around on rotation right because we could have put golden frieza potentially in the middle or something like that but the thing is is that we at this point have debuffed the metal cooler army so much that like he can't they can't damage they, they can't damage us right even golden frieza without his passive is completely safe um then cooler can just completely build up by the time we get to the metal cooler core now Cooler is going to be ready to pop off the Supernova, um, and then he's going to be able to get, like, his, you know, guaranteed um, additional super attack, right, to get the extra defense and the extra damage, and then that is it. So, there we go. There was the Wicked Bloodline Red Zone. This 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 place was very tough, man. Uh, with this Ginyu Forest team, it's just that these fights, right, like, you, you're just, you have no time to set up. You have no time, really, to, to prep or build anything up, right? Like, in Omega... I, I guess, you know, he can lock and seal and ruin your rotations and stuff like that. But you still have, you know, oftentimes eight turns, seven turns before you get to that final phase Omega. Whereas in this Wicked Bloodline red zone, it's oftentimes, again, turn two, three, four. You're going up against the toughest boss. So um, it's like you, you need, you know, some good luck, some good RNG, good maneuvering of characters around uh, in order to sort of make things work, too. Um, so let me know what you guys think of the Wicked Bloodline, uh, Wicked Bloodline Red Zone. No items by the Ginyu Force. The Ginyu Force is still very strong, but it's like, man, I do wish we had at least one more Ginyu Force member who was completely on that level of Raccoon and Goldo or Birder and Jace or something like that. They could still give us like Togoma Ginyu, Ginyu inside of Togoma's body from Dragon Ball Super. Something like that could be very, very helpful. Um, but yeah, here is where. Uh, Final Form Cooler transforms into Big Daddy Dick LR Final Form Cooler. Completely puts the team on his back and just buries the Metal Cooler core, right? So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time.